every so often it's fun to talk about the possibility of Risk v on the desktop. And that sounds like an interesting future. But if we're being honest about it, this is kind of a pipe dream. There's no real indication of the desktop going that direction, moving away from x86. And until recently, there wasn't any real indication of that happening on the mobile side either. There have been efforts to port Android over to RISC-V. We have this project from Alibaba porting Android 10. We have this other project porting Android 12. But without the support of companies like Google, it doesn't really get to go anywhere. It's ultimately nothing but kind of a toy project with maybe some very limited use cases. But for the general consumer market, if you want to have an Android phone that anybody would practically be using, you need the support of Google. And until fairly recently, it's been unclear how Google actually felt about RISC-V. Now they've used it in certain applications, but haven't really spoken much about a RISC-V device. All they've said is we're watching, but it would be a big change for us. And it turns out they've been doing a little bit more than watching. On December 12th, 2022, the Risk 5 Summit occurred, and the footage for that recently made its way online. And during Google's keynote, Lars Bergstrom, Android's Director of Engineering, said that he wants Risk 5 to be seen as a Tier 1 platform in Android, which would put it on par with ARM. Basically meaning that you could see devices that aren't just using a Risk 5 management chip, like say for example with uh, the Pixel. This is not Google's first foray into Risk 5. There is the Titan M2 chip that is been available on those devices for quite a while. This is a RISC V chip. This would mean having an actual RISC V CPU as the main CPU in the device. You could see ARM devices and RISC V devices right next to each other on a shelf. Now, this author confusingly says that's a big change from just six months ago. Bergstrom says getting optimized Android built on RISC V will take a lot of work. That's not really a change. They probably want to see it as a tier 1 platform, but there's still a lot of work that needs to be done. And outlined a roadmap that will take a few years to come to fruition. But AOSP started to land official RISC-V patches back in September. So they are clearly working on getting this done. But as I said, there have been efforts in the past to make this happen. So it's not like this is the absolute start and no one knows what's going on. But even though this is the first time that Google has properly announced their interest here, it's not like this is the first time that anybody has noticed the work that's been going on. The RISC-V Foundation has been posting a lot of blog posts about Android support on RISC-V. We have this one from back in October. We have another one from November. There's probably some newer ones that I haven't seen yet. There's going to be newer ones in the future. There is always stuff being posted about RISC-V on the RISC-V blog. They seem to know about every little mention of RISC-V anywhere on the internet. But don't get your hopes up for a RISC-V phone any time in the near future. As it says, the roadmap for the software is still a few years away. The build system is up and running, and anyone can grab the latest Risk v 64 branch whenever they want. And yes, in line with its recent ARM work, Google wants Risk 5 on Android to be 64-bit only. I honestly had no idea that it already wasn't 64-bit only. I didn't know there was still 32-bit support on the ARM side. I don't know why there is. Uh, but yeah, makes sense they're trying to end it. And considering that Risk v support in a consumer device is at the earliest three, five plus years away, yeah, by then 64-bit probably should be the only thing available. For now, the most you can get is a command line, which considering that Android at its core is the Linux kernel, having a TTY there shouldn't surprise anyone. And Bergstrom slide promised initial emulator support by the start of 2023. When it mentions emulator, it specifically mentions Cuttlefish emulator. Cuttlefish is a way to manage virtual Android devices. Uh, apart from that though, with Android runtime, art, support for Java workloads following during Q1. 
So it seems like this will be progressing at a relatively quick pace, assuming that Google doesn't get bored of the project and then send it to the Google graveyard, which is a high possibility considering Google's history. Uh, but you know, we'll see how that ends up going down. This slide and a bunch of other slides in the talk outline other things that need to be worked on. Unlike Android's unpolished support for x86, I would say um, mythical or magical or non-existent x86 support, Bergstrom promised a real push for quality with RISC-V, saying we need to do all the work to move from a prototype and something that runs to something that's really singing. That's showing off the best-in-class processes that the RISC-V international chairman, I don't know how to say that, was mentioning in the previous talk. Now, for all the faults of Google and all the faults of Android, one of the great things about Android is its heavy reliance on the JVM, the Java Virtual Machine, which makes it really easy to do cross-architecture support and cross-platform support and any sort of this cross-device support. What's fun about the Android runtime is that when Art supports RISC-V, a big chunk of the Android app ecosystem will come with it. Android apps ship as Java code. And the way that that becomes an ARM app is when the Android runtime compiles it into ARM code. Instead, it will soon compile into RISC-V code. That's a very simplified way of looking at it, but does the job with no extra work from the developer. But native code that isn't written in Java, like games and component libraries, will need to be ported over. But starting with Java code is a big jumpstart. So there is going to be a lot of stuff involved in Android that isn't just going to magically work. A lot of the lower level stuff, the more performance stuff, but getting just a general usable device isn't crazy far away. The issue with a usable device is the fact that you don't just need the software support, you also need support from the manufacturers. And I don't know how that's going to go down. So put yourself into the mindset of Samsung, for example. All of your device engineers, your device designers, all your workflow is based around working with these ARM systems. Now there is the option to use RISC-V. Are you going to make a RISC-V device? Well, what benefits is it really going to be giving you? Is it going to be a cheaper chip? Is it going to be better performance? Is it going to be maybe more product availability? And if that is the case, if there is some compelling benefit, how much is it going to cost to retool your workflow to switch over to that system? I don't have the answer for that. I would expect if this was going to happen, it would be done directly by Google themselves or with a partnership with another company. It would be like a Pixel Risk 5 or something like that, just to get the idea out into the public that these devices can exist and they do everything that your existing devices would, that I think would need to happen first, and then you could see other companies actually doing so. It's not like there is just no chance of getting RISC-V chips either. Companies like Intel and TSMC are now in the business of producing RISC-V chips for commercial use cases. If there became this use case where you would use it in a mobile device, I could see them I could see them getting involved in that as well. But it seems like the reason that Google is so interested right now is ARM is in this weird precarious position right now where it's unclear what they're going to be doing. There was the attempted sale of ARM where Nvidia was going to try and purchase them. Nvidia is a known company to be a pain to work with and they wanted to bundle together GPUs and CPUs basically trying to kick out anybody else from the market. That didn't end up going through because legislators realized that's probably a bad idea for NVIDIA to own the entire smartphone market. And then after that, ARM actually went on to sue Qualcomm for purchasing chip designs from Nuvia, not NVIDIA, Nuvia, very different company. Both of these companies have the full license to design custom ARM chips. There didn't seem to be anything wrong here, 
and Qualcomm didn't think there was. Let alone the whole mess that is the US-China trade war, and considering that the Risk v Foundation is located in Switzerland, that seems like the perfect place to have something that is neutral to what is going on in the rest of the world. But this is absolutely not the channel to discuss politics like that. Then there's the fact that Risk v doesn't have the proprietary licensing limitations that ARM does. Right now with ARM, only a small handful of companies like Qualcomm, Nuvia, and a few others are actually allowed to design full custom ARM chips. While not everyone can design a CPU, not having these licensing limitations does open up the market for these smaller design and manufacturing houses to get involved in that market. Now, while Google is being very open about their plans with RISC-V, it's not like Apple is just sitting around twiddling their thumbs, not really doing much. So... There was this job listing. Now, they have changed the link to the job list, and they've changed the um, the title of the job list, but initially this said, Risk 5 Design Engineer. If you go to that link now, it redirects you to CPU Design Engineer, and any mention of Risk 5 has been removed from this page. But in cache search results, it tells you what it originally said. Do you want to join us to help deliver the next groundbreaking Apple products? In this visible role, you'll be responsible to take part in the Risk 5 VLSI design cycle from early definition through the back-end implementation stage. Now, could this have been someone in the HR department receiving two separate documents and then mixing them together? Absolutely. Could this have been someone who wants to hide the fact that Apple is working on Risk v and just say generically CPU? Absolutely. Apple has not come out and said any particular statements about Risk v in the future, but I wouldn't be surprised if they do it. They went arm on their computers. If Risk v seems valuable to them, I could see them do it. And there are rumors from late last year about Apple looking into doing exactly this. But until we see things shipped to the end user, nothing is really going to be confirmed. But I think it would be neat, and I'm certainly going to talk about it if it does happen. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Do you care at all about Risk v Do you think a Risk v smartphone would be cool? Do you think this is just Google wasting money for the sake of wasting money? I would love to know. So let me know your thoughts, and if you liked the video, I'm going to go like the video. If you really liked the video, and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe, simply bear pay, link in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea. I've got a gaming channel called Brady on Games. That's going to be it for me, and I'm out. <laughs>